Uh, so my name is Maxime Dumont and I'm product manager for ScanWatch and, and more generally for all the watches that we do at Withings. So my name is uh, Romain Kazanvat and I worked in the applied research team. We look at the, at the sensor part of the, of the product. So I'm Paul Edouard, I'm a data scientist at, uh, at Withings, part of the, the machine learning team. And my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist based in Vienna, Austria. In this video, I'll share an interview I did with some of the creators of the Withings ScanWatch. As you might have seen on my channel, I've done several tests on the Withings ScanWatch, some of which turned out positive and some of which turned out negative. In this interview, I asked the people at Withings about the updates they've implemented for the ScanWatch since its release, what updates they've planned for the near and far future, about the design decisions they made, and also about how to get the most accurate measurements with the ScanWatch. The total interview took more than two hours, so I cut it up into several smaller coherent videos, of which this is the first one. I found the interview to be very interesting, but as always, I don't want to waste your time, so timestamps are in the description below and also on the timeline. The interview was recorded using Zoom, so the quality of the audio and the video are not optimal. Yeah, the ScanWatch has been out for a few months now, and I assume that you got a lot of feedback from users. Uh, especially the ones that were in the early adopter program. So what were the, the positive feedbacks? What were the negative feedbacks? And how have you uh, worked with those? Yeah, so uh, ScanWatch has been released first, as you know, in July. Uh, we called that the, the insider program. Uh, and there were uh, approximately 1,500 people who got the watch before the others. So we had a lot of uh, very useful feedback. We, we wanted to, to, to build a, a watch that had some medical features and uh, like the ECG and the SpO2 measurements. And uh, so this first part, we, we got many feedbacks and we generally, it was very good, uh, but some things were perfected. So we worked on, on those, uh, those uh, feedbacks uh, to release another version of the watch in September. What were the major changes you would say that were implemented over the last few months since the first release? Uh, the first release in July, there was no AFib detection via a PPG sensor. This was actually a, an, an update that we wanted to do because it's one of the three uh, big topics of the watch that are certified. So we have been working on it for a long time, but it mm -hmm. came it's in, in September when it was more mature than in July. And we are still working on new uh, improvements on the watch. If we uh, add some new features, it will be maybe in, a, in another version of the watch, like in six months or one year. So you say the major software updates will come in six months. Is there anything in the short term? At the moment, because the watch was uh, just released, we are adding some improvements and, and, and new minor, let's say minor features uh, to the watch. Um, and one of the features that people actually asked, sorry, asked us and that mm -hmm. we worked on because, well, people were asking it, uh, is the ability to take uh, measurements of SpO2, uh, oxygen saturation, during the night when you're asleep. Yeah. So that's going to come uh, in the next uh, days, and you will have the ability to have the, uh, the average of your SpO2 during the night when you wake up. Uh, there's a, a new software update that will come in, uh, like, during December, uh, for example, uh, in the next feature, we will have a, a new onboarding um, experience, mostly design, but it's uh, way clearer to understand uh, because there are a lot of, of uh, features on the watch and it's sometimes a bit confusing and you have questions about this uh, later on in, the, in yeah. the interview about AFib via PPG or AFib via ECG, so it's, it's going to be more clear to, to understand. I ran some tests on the scan watch and I saw, for instance, in the beginning, um, when I tested it, the heart rate monitor gave me um, some issues. So with that, I have two questions. First of all, what should I do to ensure that I get the best heart rate measurements? And do you think that I did something wrong or were there also some software issues? The, the, the Jaffer measurement was not quite uh, on point. There were a couple issues. We developed a, a heart rate algorithm from, from, for previous versions of the watch, like it's still a trade, uh, etc. There are um, uh, hardware modification on the scan watch. Uh, we have to update the algorithm and sometimes we're, we're not quite sure which um, part of the algorithm needs, needs to be updated. In, in our case, we, 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 we feel we had issues uh, during uh, running 
like we have we have standardized tests as uh, different um, activities like running, walking, uh, going up and down stairs, uh, walking on a keyboard, for instance, sleeping, etc. And we figured out uh, we figured out that we, that we had uh, issues uh, during running and, and, and physical activities in, in, in general. We we updated the the algorithm uh, several times, and we are now significantly more accurate uh, during uh, running and some uh, physical activities like the one uh, you you tested. Cool. In the first Q and A you guys gave, there was some mentioning of a third party app integration. What are the plans for that? What is in the pipeline? What is released or going to be released? Uh, we are actually uh, thinking about uh, about it a lot. It's so something that we want to plan in the in the next month for for ScanWatch and and more generally for the uh, the, the the HealthMate app, uh, which is the the app for uh, of weddings. I can't really uh, tell you which third party app is going to be the next uh, one to be integrated. Uh, I can tell you that in the next uh, software release, we are more integrating the Apple Health uh, app because we're going to be able to export all ECGs and, and HR stuff to, uh, to Apple Health. So it's uh, the integration works both ways and uh, we want to make sure that everything is uh, aligned between those two apps. And in general, is there a big difference for iPhone users versus Android users when, when using the, the scan watch or any other device for where things? Do you also integrate, for instance, with the... Uh, the Android version? Yeah, uh, Google Health is a bit, uh, I mean, we, we, we started with Apple Health because we have a lot of clients that are on Apple. Yeah. On Apple. So um, it's, uh, it's the reason why. We have a lot of, um, of people asking for integration of, uh, of Google Health and uh, other third party uh, integration. Um, we have concentrated on um, apps that were uh, used a lot by, uh, by our clients, our first clients for SteelHR, for example, with, with Strava, which is integrated now. Yeah, we're, we're obviously thinking about uh, integrating uh, apps for, for Android users. And in that line, there's also media control. Um, is that something that will come? There can be um, media control. This is something we're thinking about. As you know, uh, ScanWatch is firstly and mostly a medical device. So media control is something that is like a secondary feature for, for ScanWatch, but it's been asked a lot by people and it's uh, something that we want to, to at least try. Maybe in the six, uh, in the six months, uh, in the six following months, uh, there will be something, maybe. <laughs> um, so we're talking about medical stuff, you're mentioning that. I can imagine that it's quite difficult working with different regulatory agencies in Europe and in the US. So does that mean that there are currently any differences between the scan watch in Europe and the US, either algorithm based or what you're allowed to do, or uh, is it actually the same at the moment? Well, first of all, there's no scan watch in the US for now, uh, for a simple reason, and you actually mentioned it. It's because the the regulation between the, has a, a lot of differences between the EU zone and and the US. Uh, actually, it's a very uh, large difference because we we can't certify the same uh, in the Europe and in the US because we have to certify in one zone the hardware and the software in another zone we can certify only the the, the hardware or only the software so uh, there are, there are major differences between the the regulations in in different zones um, what we did and we always do that because we're in France we we start with the uh, is the, the CE marking to make sure that we can sell the, the watch in, in Europe. Actually, the CE marking is uh, a very good basis for um, uh, Australia and New Zealand certification. So we launched the watch in Australia uh, and we're gonna launch it in New Zealand as well. But in the US, for example, the FDA um, agency requires a lot of uh, certifications that are, that are a bit different than in, the, in Europe. In general, um, we can, use the same algorithm because it's used mm -hmm. in Europe and it's uh, more than enough to be certified in the US. But sometimes we need some more data and more clinical studies to make sure that we pass the certifications in the US. That's why it, it takes a lot of time because we went to Europe first and then we have to do uh, the, the, uh, a lot of new certifications for the US. How often does the scan watch take heart rate measurements both during activity? So if, if I say I'm doing sports and how often does it measure it 
during the day and how often during the night and what are the, the reasons for these frequencies? Either you're in, in a workout mode and then the watch measures uh, are trade continuously. So it, you, you, you could say that it, it's measured every, um, every second. And uh, out of workouts, uh, we measure heart rate every 10 minutes. Uh, so we uh, lighted the LEDs on the back of the, of the watch for one minute every 10 minutes. To give you an idea, uh, during respiratory scans, the LEDs are, are, are lit up during the whole night. So that's maybe mm -hmm. eight hours a day. And in, in this mode, we, we think that the battery life is around uh, seven days. If we wanted to do it uh, continuously 24-7, uh, like, like we would have maybe three, four days of battery life. We have this feeling that um, uh, the, the watch is intended to be used by people that, that want um, a, a trend of their health o over the, the weeks and over months. And we, we, we don't really, we're not really um, at ease with the fact that uh, we want to destroy battery life of the watch uh, just to make sure that we have a one second measurement every second measurement of heart rate because it's not our philosophy our philosophy is to have the, the trend of your heart rate um, over months and, and, and make sure that your, the evolution is good and uh, when you do sport your maybe your your health is better and uh, and when you have problems make sure that we spot them i, I agree that there's, a, there's a notion of like um there's, there's a battery life, but there's also the relevance. Like we, we won't take a measurement that are not relevant. I use a lot of different wearables and some of them actually give me sort of tips. Like they say, uh, in the morning you have a bad sleep score, maybe you should not do exercise today or, or, or things like that. Is it also something you are considering doing for the scan watch, for instance, to, to give people actually tips instead of just information? Well, usually when we suggest a metric uh, on, on the watch that has not been certified we do not feel the uh, legitimacy to to give tips uh, as we mainly rely on uh, on doctors and uh, people that are accompanying the, uh, the, the patient or, or the client on, on those metrics if we want to to think about uh, some tips to to give we we mainly stay in the general uh, knowledge so for example we have uh, general information about sleep in the app directly uh, but we don't really personalize it to to the to the sleep score of each person because we have no real legitimacy to to do it. Uh, the sleep score talks by itself because when you get twenty out of hundred, you know that there's something wrong. But usually, yeah. you see it and you feel it because you have probably only only slept for two days, uh, sorry, two two hours uh, during the during your night. But but then. If you have 20 or 30 of, of sleep score, it doesn't change a lot uh, on, the, on how you feel uh, during the morning. And, and we, we will not give you some tips to, to, to stop the sport. or think they, this, this is the job of, of a doctor. Sometimes on YouTube, I got the question if people should buy the scan watch or if they should stick with their steel HR or something. So who are the people that should basically consider buying the scan watch or upgrading from another Withings product to the scan watch? Uh, the steel HR was uh, was uh, made for people who who are doing uh, doing a lot of sports, but also for everybody. Because the main thing about our watches at Withings is that they are they are they are analog watches. So the design is one of the things that are most important uh, at Withings. With ScanWatch, we have a lot of medical features that need um, medical certification and. The first watch that we made between the Steel HR and the Scan Watch with the, the physical uh, feature was the Movie CG. Um, so um, between the HR, Movie CG, and, and Scan Watch, we are going to to medical uh, scope. The, the purpose of the Scan Watch is to uh, help people um, follow their metrics without having the, the pain of going to the doctors. About wearing the device, what is the optimal way? Is there like a, a best position to get an accurate heart rate, to get an accurate SpO2? Like, is there any difference for that when I measure an ECG? Should I move it up or down, or when I measure an SpO2? We have the same guidelines for all the measurements. Uh, you should maybe compare to a regular watch, wear it a bit lower than your uh, forearm, so closer mm -hmm. to the elbow. So usually we have we recommend that you wear it at least one centimeter from the, you know, the bone that you have, mm -hmm. the bone on the wrist. Once you're at this location, 
you have to tighten it correctly. What we mean by correctly is quite tight, but you know, not too much, like you don't want to crush the, the skin underneath the watch. Mm -hmm. But a good way to, to know that you have tightened it correctly is that if you move the watch, the skin underneath it should move uh, the same way. Like it means that there is a good optical contact between the sensor and the skin. And if you are in this situation, uh, you'll get good measurements. That's true for ECG measurements, SpO2 measurements, heart rate measurements. The maybe the only difference is that if you want to measure heart rate during uh, exercise, where you will be moving a lot, it may be better to just you know put it like one notch tighter, just because you you are going to move uh, more. And what are the main mistakes people make in wearing and measuring things with the scan watch? Have you found that there are are typical mistakes people tend to make? Not to tighten the watch properly like a lot of people just wear their watch and it's just hanging from the wrist but also for spo2 measurements for instance we ask people to to be very, to be very still uh, to not move at all and a lot of people think they are not moving but actually they are like they might be you know talking and then when you talk you just you tend to move uh, a little uh, or just moving other parts of their body which means that they are not perfectly still so i think the main yeah, yeah is to think that you are at rest, but you really, you are not really at rest. And does it matter if I have my hand like this or, or open? Yes. So it does because when you, when you clench your fist, you know, there is some tension uh, in, your, in your wrist. So the, the tendons are tense. And this will, you, you can probably see that if you do that uh, strongly, you can see that the, the shape of the skin underneath the watch can change. Uh, depends on, you know, depends on people. But basically, it will make it harder to, to have a very flush and a neat uh, contact. I found the interview to be very interesting. But one thing I definitely need to retest is the heart rate accuracy after the latest software updates. Have you noticed any improvements in the heart rate detection accuracy of the Withing scan watch after firmware or software updates? Let us know in the comments below. In the other videos, I'll address things like the sleep prediction accuracy, sleep apnea, and the difference between ECG and PPG for AFib detection. I will always try to be objective in any video that I make, and with things that not support me in any way for making this video, except for kindly donating their time. In my videos, I do scientific tests on different devices like the Aura Ring, the Fitbit, and the ScanWatch. And in the end, I hope to use tracking to improve my life. So if you like that subject and like this video, consider subscribing to my channel and also consider giving it a thumbs up because it makes it easier for other people to find my videos. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be releasing the other parts of the interview in addition to my normal content. So stay tuned for more testing of wearables. I'll be testing things like the sleep tracking accuracy of different Apple Watch apps. Until then, have a great day.